Hi, in this video, we're going to talk about putting variable and mass together and doing something more useful. So the first example I'm going to show is how to compute the perimeter of a square given its site. So I'm going to create a variable called site. For now, I'm going to give it a value of 5. And as we know, the perimeter of a square is the side multiplied by 4. So I'm going to say side multiplied by 4. Now, if I just do that, um, that number is, is going to be computed, but it's going nowhere. Okay, so I'm going to actually assign that result to another variable. I'm going to call it perimeter of square. And again, I'm going to you assign it so i'm going to use the assignment operator that assigns the result of this expression to the variable perimeter of square and then finally i want to see what the result is so i'm going to print it out and uh, if i run this and hopefully i've done everything right then we are going to see the result of 20 which is what we expected. And I believe that's what these slides are trying to say here. Right. Okay. So a few things I like to point out about the name of a variable that we haven't talked about previously. And so the first thing is the name must not contain spaces. So if you just want to say perimeter of square, well, Python is going to be, um, not very happy because these become separate entities. So we cannot use spaces in the name of variable. And the name of a variable, it cannot start with a number. So I cannot put like um, a four here. And as a matter of fact, I don't think I can put like funny uh, symbols and, and things like that because all of those have special meaning to um, Python. Now, the name of a variable should typically be short and descriptive, such as side. Um, now, short and descriptive, they're kind of uh, conflicted, right? Because when, when it comes to things like perimeter of a square, well, that's not exactly short, but is it, it is very descriptive. Now, uh, when you have to pick between short and descriptive, I personally I would pick descriptive at the expense of the length of the variable. So, um, because, you know, we want, we want, uh, the code to be readable. So, um, yeah, if you have to make a choice, then I, I would do perimeter of a square. Now, in one very important thing is the name of a variable should almost always be lowercase. So I don't want to see things like capital perimeter of capital square and things like that. So, um, yeah, mostly lower cases, unless there are very good reasons for using capital letters. Can't think of any right now. And then lastly, if the name kind of contains more than one word, as in this case, you know, perimeter of square, then to help with, you you can, you know, say perimeter of square, but in that case, it's really hard to figure out what this thing is. So the, the convention is to separate those words with the underscore character, okay? And this style of naming variables or naming anything is called snake case because I guess it kind of looks like a little snake. Okay, so these are the are other things about name of a variable. All right, so I think it's time for you to get your hands dirty and work on a slightly more complicated um, example on your own. And that is, let's calculate the perimeter of a rectangle given its width that is stored in a variable and its length that is stored in another variable. And uh, you should know, hopefully, that the perimeter of a rectangle is two times the sum of its width and length. And um, of course, you know, um, 
print out the parameter to verify that you've actually done this correctly. So pause the video and give this exercise a try. And assuming that you have done that, here it would be the code to do that. The, we'll just create a variable called width and assign it the um, value of 3, and then the variable length, assign it the value of 5, and we can compute 2 times width plus length in parentheses, right? Because otherwise it would do the multiplication before the addition. And then once we do that, we assign that um, to another variable, perimeter of rectangle, and we can print it out. And if you've done this correctly, it should print out 16. All right, so let's go back to our original example of the perimeter of a square and do a couple more things to make sure that we understand the effect of changing values of variable. So the first thing I'd like to do is, okay, well, instead of the psi being 5, what if I change it to a value like 10? Okay, so let's run this and we see that now that the psi is 10, it's 10 or psi uh, multiplied by 4 would give us 40. Okay, so that's what we expect. Now let's do another thing. What if here I'm going to change psi to, let's say, 15? Okay, and now obviously psi should be 15 at that point, but what about the perimeter of square? Well, you can um, try to guess to see what that is. Um, I'm going to run it, and, well, the second time around, it's still 40. So it's very important to, to, to recognize that, that even though we change the psi or the variable here, we did not change the perimeter of a square after we change psi, set psi to a different value. So perimeter of square without being explicitly modified, it's going to remain what it was before. And that is what these slides are telling us. Okay, so let's do one more thing then. What if I want to calculate the perimeter of a square whose side is 15? Well, then what we have to do is to do this calculation again. We do the psi multiplied by 4 again, and then we have to assign that result to perimeter of square. Then only after having done that, then when we print out the perimeter of square, then hopefully it will show us that it is now 60. And that's what this slide is saying, that the only way that the value of perimeter of square is updated is when we explicitly assign, using the assignment operator, it a new value. So this is actually something that is very, very important to recognize in Python and in most other programming language, is that the only time the only time the value of a variable is updated or is changed is when its name appears on the left-hand side of an assignment operator. So, and using this syntax that we we have seen a few times now. So, um, again. The variable here is x, that's the name of the variable. It can be any variable, it doesn't have to be named x, right? And this is the assignment operator, and we can assign it whatever value we want to assign to the, to the variable x. And that, and, um, x is on the left hand side, or LHS, of the assignment operator, and this is again the only time that x gets a new value. And when x gets a new value or its value is updated, um, we also say that we kind of write to this variable. So when you see write to a variable, that's equivalent of saying, you know, we are putting the variable on the LHS or left hand side of 
an assignment operator. The flip side of this is that other than on the LHS of an assignment operator, anywhere else when we see the name of a variable, then its value is read and its value is used instead of its name. So in this case, you know, x is, has the value of 1, then when we say print x, we in, instead of printing the string or the character x, its value, which is 1, replaces the variable itself, and that's why we print out the number 1. So with this knowledge, now we are ready to look at some more interesting statements that we can do but uh, with um, variable and math. So here are a few lines of code. Notice that in this line, we have x appear on both sides of the assignment operator. So what happens in this case? Well, let's run it first and see what it prints out. Alright, so it prints out 3. So x at this point has the value of 3. How did it come to be 3? Well, what happens is um, when there is an assignment operator and when there is an expression that is on the right side of the assignment operator, Python evaluates the expression first. And when it sees the x, because x is not on the left-hand side of an operator, then x is, well, is on the RHS, or the right-hand side of the assignment operator, so it is replaced by its value, which is 1 at this point. So we are, eva or the Python is evaluating 1 plus 2, which gives us 3, and the next thing it does is it assigns the value 3 to the variable that is on the LHS, left-hand side, of the assignment operator, which happens to be x itself in this case. So we're assigning 3 back to x. And that's why when we get to this line, we print it out, we get an output of 3. And now it's time for a slightly more complicated exercise. So there are three lines of code here. The first line is we do x equal to 10, and then we do x equal to x plus x, and then we do that again. So I would like you to work out by hand first what is the final value of x. And then you can try it in Python, and hopefully, uh, again, your uh, the, the result you derive by hand matches what Python gives you. So pause the video and give this a try, please. And so if you do it correctly, you should see the value that the final value of x is 40. And the reason for that is at this line of code, x has the number 10, right? And in on the second line, Python evaluates x plus x first, and x has the value of 10, and therefore we're doing 10 plus 10, which is 20, and 20 is assigned to x. So x has 20 after this line, and then the next thing that happens is it's doing x plus x again, so we will be doing, uh, uh, Python is doing 20 plus 20, which results in 40, and 40 is assigned back to x. So that's why after all three lines of code are finished, we have x equals 40. So as we wrap up this topic of the interaction between variable and math, I just want to point out that in Professor Losef's um, writing materials, study materials, if you read them, um, he described the variable as a label of a memory location inside a computer. Now, that is how it works behind the scene. However, this level of understanding is not quite necessary just yet. So for now, it is okay 
if you just see a variable as a name that is associated with a value. Now, uh, we will have more to say about um, what variable and what memory location means all of that at a later time when we come to the object-oriented part of the class.